One of the methods for separating mixtures is distillation. Imagine we have a solution of red food coloring in water. Let's say we want to separate the water from the food coloring and save both of them. Because this is a solution, it cannot be separated with a filter. However, it is known that at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, water will boil. But at 100 degrees Celsius, food coloring will not boil. Substances with different boiling points can be separated by a process called distillation. We'll show you how distillation is done. We start with just a flask with our food coloring and water solution. Now we'll add a Bunsen burner and a couple of stands. We'll clamp the flask to the stand. Now we'll add a piece of glass apparatus called a condenser. This is also attached to the stand with a clamp, but we've left out the clamp here for simplicity. A condenser has a glass tube running through the center of it. Outside of the central tube is another glass tube that surrounds it, just like a jacket is worn on the outside of your body. Any liquid that is in the outside tube cannot flow into the inside tube, and any liquid that's in the inside tube cannot flow into the outside tube. Next, we'll add some rubber hoses to the condenser. We'll place an empty flask here. Later, it will be used to collect one of our products. Now we'll attach the holes on the bottom of the condenser to a cold water tap. When we turn the tap on, cold water runs into this hose. The cold water fills the outer jacket of the condenser. After the jacket is filled, the water comes out of the top and drains out through the hose on the left, where it goes into a sink. Cold water keeps circulating through the outer jacket of the condenser. After we start the Bunsen burner and heat the flask up to 100 degrees, the mixture starts to boil. We'll zoom in closer. We can imagine that this solution of water and food coloring contains water molecules, which we'll show as H2O, and food coloring molecules, which we'll show as FC for food coloring. Remember that even though we've only shown a few molecules here, this mixture contains billions of these molecules. And even when this is greatly magnified, the actual molecules are far too small to see. This is just a model to help us imagine these molecules. And remember, at 100 degrees, water will boil, but food coloring will not boil. As the mixture boils, we see that the water molecules escape, but food coloring molecules do not. This is because it is only the water that is boiling. So above the mixture we have steam, which only contains water molecules, so it is pure water vapor. All of the food coloring molecules remain in the red mixture below the steam, so we are beginning to separate the water from the solution. Water vapor is actually invisible, but we'll show it as gray here, just so we can see it. As the water in the mixture boils, the flask fills up with steam, or water vapor. We want to save the water vapor and turn it back into water. So our flask has a stopper on top. The water vapor is forced to move into the side arm. It goes down the side arm and into the center tube of the condenser. Notice the hot water vapor passes by the cold surface of this jacket filled with cold water. If you have a cold surface like a glass of cold water, Water vapor from the air will condense on the surface and form water droplets. We have the same situation in the center of our condenser. There is water vapor in the center tube, and a cold surface where the cold water jacket touches the center tube. We'll zoom in and imagine water molecules from water vapor coming together and condensing into a water droplet on the cold surface. The process of changing from water vapor to liquid water is condensation. As more water condenses, the water droplet grows. Water droplets continue to form as the water vapor condenses. They run down the tube and out of the condenser. Now look at the flask on the left. 
We have now reached the point where all the water has boiled away and there's no water left in the mixture. You can see that no more steam is forming now. And all that's left in the flask on the left is red food coloring, which turns into a powder when all of the water is removed from the solution. Water formed in the condenser flows into the flask on the right and the burner is turned off so the red food coloring does not burn. We've now finished the process. We have pure red food coloring powder in the flask on the left and pure water in the flask on the right. Both of these came from the original solution we started with in the flask on the left. We'll review by watching the whole process. The jacket around the condenser is filled with cold water. The solution is heated until water boils. Steam from the boiling water fills the flask. It then goes into the center tube of the condenser. And here it condenses into liquid water. This pure liquid water then flows into the flask on the right. So we started with a solution of food coloring in water. And using the process of distillation, we were able to separate it into pure food coloring powder and pure water. Also note that distillation enables us to recover both of the original materials without losing anything.